In this one, we're going to be setting up Django hosts. Django hosts allows us to do things with our subdomain. That is, so our subdomains, if we have them, they redirect where we want them to go, or they use different URL patterns depending on what they are. In our case, at least for this one, what we're going to be doing is actually redirecting it. So if something like blog.tur.com was, was actually used, it would actually redirect it to www.com slash whatever the URL is. And that's going to be true for any subdomain, let alone just blog. Um, but we're going to be testing specifically blog because we set that up in the last one to our hosts. If you remember back, we have it in here right there. So that's actually allowing us to test that. But what we're doing will definitely carry over to our live project as well. So jumping into the Django host documentation, of course, it's Django host, Django dash host dot read the docs dot IO. This is where we're going to be jumping in. So I'm going to go to the installation part and that's pip install Django hosts. Very simple, very easy. And then we're going to jump open up our settings file. So source cur settings and inside of installed apps, we are going to put our third party ones here. And this one is Django dash hosts and we'll save that. And the next thing it talks about in the setup process is putting stuff in our middleware. So we'll go ahead and do it. So the first one in our middleware at the very top, as it says at the very beginning, and then the last one at the very end. So I briefly mentioned middleware before, but if you think back to how our views work, we click on a URL, right? We click on something here and then, or we go to that URL, a get request is called, and then that takes us to the view function that handles it. In between the routing process, in between actually going to any given URL and the view, something called middleware happens. And that's also true when it goes into the URL as well as when it goes out. So when it first hits the view, there's something that happens before this. And then when it leaves the view, there's something that happens after that. So think of it as something here and then something here. And then if we like kind of tab that in, these functions are happening as middleware. That's essentially what that concept is. Um, so that's just the base of that specifically. So the reason that we need it at the beginning, at the end is because of how URLs are mapped and the domain is mapped and all that stuff. So that's why that they have it there. If you were um, wondering that the next thing we want to do is make a hosts file right inside of the main configuration folder where urls.py is, we're going to do hosts.py. And I'm just following along with their settings and going back into um, our actual settings.py, we're going to put the setting of root, root host config, and I'm going to put it right next to root URL config. And this is going to be cur.hosts, right? It's virtually the same thing as URLs. That's it's there for a reason. Um, and now what we need to do is actually set our default host to the host pattern that we want. So we actually have to create our host pattern. So I'm going to go ahead and copy what's going on here. And we're going to go back into our host, paste that in. I'm going to comment out that other one, but I'm going to leave this www dot here. And we've got setting dot root URL configuration, right? Root URL configuration being this configuration file right here, or at least the path to it. But we do need to set our default host. That is the default where um, Django hosts will always know where to go. And that is going to be www. And that is coming from this name right here. So if you change it to something different, it would go to that something different. So that's the basics of that in particular. So if we go back into our project and refresh, let's make sure we run the server. We might actually need to do Python manage.py migrate. We're getting no module name Django dash hosts. Oh, no module main and installed apps. So if I look back into settings, I see this should be actually Django underscore hosts. And if you were following their documentation really well, you would have saw that as well. Um, so now back into our terminal, we're going to run migrate and we did the migrations. Nothing had to happen. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and run the server again. 
and we're missing the host patterns. Let's go back, make sure everything is saved up and the errors go away. I refresh in here and I see that um, there's still the same error is happening. That's because our subdomain is not actually being redirected yet. We just have our WW definitely working where our subdomain is not. Um, so that's absolutely what I wanna do. So let's uncomment this wildcard function here. And I'm gonna change the regular expression only slightly. And that is we are gonna get rid of what's in here and just do question mark, exclamation mark, www, and then dot star. So that is now gonna be doing our redirect. That's the opposite of www. So if you said ABC here, you could do ABC here. It's basically everything else. So I'm gonna go ahead and save that and we're gonna go into our Chrome and we'll refresh in here and it says no module name path. Well, of course it doesn't have one because we actually didn't make our custom URLs yet. So to do this, I'm actually gonna create a new module inside of this settings module and I'm gonna call it a new uh, folder and I'll call it hosts conf, like host configuration. I'll make a new file in here, call it init.py and then we're gonna make a new file in here, call it urls.py, and then finally a, another new file called views.py, or views.py, of course. So the first thing, I'm gonna close off the init file. This is now the path. So instead of our hosts, we're gonna do cur dot host conf dot urls. Now do note that this is the old method of writing URL patterns. There's a very likely chance that Django hosts in the future is gonna do something more like what Django does now. So there's a possibility, and you're gonna to wanna to check the documentation, that it's gonna look something a little bit more like this. So from cur.hostsconf, import URLs, and then this would be just URLs, or we could say it as redirect URLs, something more like that. That might happen in the future. So I just wanted to make this note in here because this video is um, gonna last for a while, hopefully. And that way our URL host patterns will look correct. And of course that specifically would be there inside of our actual uh, usage right here. So that would actually be written there and the rest of it should work just fine. Okay, so now that we've got this, we've got our redirect URLs. So this is a standard URLs, um, actual URLs.py. It's just like our other one. So if I went and copied just the main stuff in this other one, copied it and pasted it into our new URLs, I can actually use pretty much the same sort of stuff. I don't need a lot of it. So I can actually delete everything except for just the URL import. And then these are all of the views that I'll end up having. I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of all that. But our URLs are gonna be a little bit different. In this case, I'm gonna just put any sort of path here. So I'll do question mark P, so I'm naming it as path, and then just do dot star, and literally that's all I'm putting. I'm not putting a dollar sign at the end of it, that's it. So I also need to do an import from views, so from dot views, that is the relative import, so it's gonna be this views. We need to actually create our own function for it inside of here. So this function, I'm just gonna make a function-based view function, and we'll do from django.http import HTTP response redirect. And that's pretty much it. We're gonna do define. This is gonna be the wildcard redirect. That's what we'll call it. And it's gonna take in the request, and we'll say path equaling to none. So path being this path right here. And now I wanna have the default URL, so I'll have to add in into the settings. So from django.conf, import settings. And we'll do default path equaling to get attribute and settings module. And we'll call this default, let's call it default redirect path in the settings or redirect URL rather, that's probably better. So let's just call them both that, let's be consistent. And this case, I'm gonna call it HTTP colon slash slash www dot, notice the www dot, 
And for us, we are testing, so we're doing tur.com, and there we go. So now that we've got that, we can come down here and we'll say if path is not none, we'll say URL or new URL equals to the default URL redirect plus the path, right? So the path, um, we also want to make sure that we have this ends with a trailing slash. And right now we don't have it on a trailing slash. So let's just go ahead and make sure that we add the trailing slash in here. And this is the format that we're going to follow along with. So um, the final thing, I'll just say new URL equals to default URL redirect. And if the path's not none, it's going to add in that path. And then we're going to just return HTTP response redirect of this new URL. And since I've got this, I'm going to go into my settings and basically add in that attribute there. So let's just copy that and bring it in right underneath this. And we'll do default redirect URL is equal to tur.com. Of course, later it's going to be cur.co, but that's good in of itself now. Now in, inside of our URLs, we want to import this wildcard redirect. So from dot views, import wildcard redirect, copy this, paste it here, save it. We now have our URL set up. We now have our host set up. So if we go back in here into our actual page here, Hopefully we don't have any errors. If I refresh in here, I got a line syntax error on urls.py. So I could guess what the URL is. Um, sometimes it'll say what the actual file is, but right here it's not saying that. It's not actually giving us a whole lot here, but it did at least say local vars where it's coming from, or at least where it thinks it's coming from. So let's go ahead and go into cur.hostconfig.urls. And we see here that it says, Oh, well, line three, there it is, from dot views from, it should be import. I think I said import, but anyways. Um, so now that we've got that, let's go back and let's take a look at this URL. If I refresh it, now it goes into my other URL. Um, looks like maybe server error a little bit. I'm gonna refresh. Oh, tur.com, that's why, because this should be 8,000. Um, that's the only way it's actually going to show it, right? So let's try that again, blog 8,000. It's going to tur.com. It's not actually considering the 8,000 port, but it is definitely showing us the URL as needed. So since we're testing it, let's go ahead and add in that 8,000 here. So we save that and let's try that again with blog. Oh, we also need it in our settings. 8,000, that's actually where we needed it. Um, so I refresh in here. In fact, let's leave this as cur.co because that's realistically where it's gonna be um, when we go live. So we save it, refresh into our blog. So we'll do 8,000, my short code, not found, change this to blog, and it redirects very nicely here. We change it to anything else. This, the reason that this can't be reached is it has to do with our local hosts. So if I did live dot, and I wanted to add live dot and I wanted to test it, I could come into my local hosts and I could just add it in as a new line here, 127.0.0.1 and live.tur.com, close it out, save it, refresh. And now we've got another error, uh, hosts.sf. Let's see what's going on here. Um, so we save this, let's look at hosts. Oh. Maybe a little little spelling, something happened here. There we go, that was some testing errors. There we go, and hosts conf, refresh, and there. Now it does that redirect again. So back to it, live, and also blog. Um, everything's redirecting the way we want it to. Now, of course, these regular expression patterns are the same as the ones that we would be using here. So um, that also means that if you did want something like live and have completely different URLs than your WW, you totally 100% can do that. That's how you would do it right here. And you could also have it, let's say for instance, we did it here and I just said live, right? That would allow me to do those sorts of things. So if I change this to settings.conf to the different URLs, you would just change the URLs basically. I refresh in here and now what I'll see when I go live 
Oop, duplicate name wildcard. This should be live. We can't have duplicate names here, otherwise it's gonna get mad at us. Um, so we refresh the server and we refresh in here and I do live.myshortcode. The URL does not change, but the URL patterns go off of you know what else is coming. So what Django host does is basically handle all the stuff beforehand, before the domain. So any wildcard domain is what it's called um, and redirects it according to where we want it to go. Of course, I don't actually want that live there. I just want every other redirect, including if I went to tur.com, it would redirect it to www. Really nice, really useful. That's Django hosts. Um, so we still have some more things that we want to do, of course, and that is analytics stuff and also actually being able to submit a URL like going to uh, our main domain name and submitting a URL here. It gives us back that short code and then we can start to share that short code. If you have any questions on Django hosts, let us know. Definitely refer to the documentation for general errors. There's a lot of things that could possibly go wrong and the documentation does lay it out very, very well but I definitely wanted to introduce it to you and show you how it's done, at least in what we're doing here. Um, it does have another way to do what we just did, which is this right here. Um, that's called a negative look ahead, meaning the opposite of whatever that URL is. That's, that's one way, another way to do it. Um, and again, look out for those patterns probably changing in the near future. There is something I did not mention, and that is how to use these URLs or the wildcard stuff inside of a template tag, as well as the reverse tag, so URL resolvers. So for those of you who are a little bit more advanced users, definitely take a look at how this stuff is done with the note that hosts is, is going off of, like the host part is going off of the name that we give it. All right, thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one.